Hey, Shalom. This is the brother Ba'a. You're back here once again. Before I get started, like always, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Rachah Kadash. Double honors to my teachers, the elder apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to the hopeful leg. Yeah, man, there's too many unproductive people in this world today. Um, matter of fact, let me start off with this scripture here in the book of 2nd Edris, chapter 9, verse 22. Let the multitude perish then which was born in vain. The scripture is telling us that the Lord put the spirit on Edris to write this down, that the multitude should, the multitude that was born in vain shall perish. So you got a lot of people on the planet earth today that were born in vain, right? Um, when you go into the word vain and its meaning, it means unprofitable, worthless, devoid of real value and idle right this is the this is this is the key word i want to use for this visit video idle all right idle ties in with vain all right it's one of the definitions for vain um and my the inspiration for this video is because um the job that i work i get an insight into people's daily lives and i get to see people how they are um, on a daily basis all right at their homes and, you know, their home lifestyle. Um, you know, how they are on that day. Because, you know, your routine, your daily routine doesn't really fucking change. All right? You probably eat the same thing for breakfast majority of the time. You know, you leave for the you leave at the same time to go to work. And, you know, however your day is throughout the week, it's pretty much the same. It's, you know, it's, um, um, it's pretty monotonous, right? You go into the word monotony, it means, um, you know, uh, just rep just, you know, repetitiously doing something over and over. You know, your your days become the same. Um, so I've been I've been able to, you know, see people in their, you know, their natural environments, every, you know, their regular daily routine. And, you know, it's this it's these guys and they're Jake. They may be Judah, but they seem like so-called black men. Uh, they could be Benjamin or Levi. You know, they could be Gad, but they give me Judah vibes. Anyways, you know, these guys are outside every day smoking weed, listening to that gangster rap music. And these guys are ranging from ages 50, right, in their 50s, all the way down to, you know, uh, 30s and 20s, right? Just, and even younger, but they just, you know, same shit, monotony, just, you know, the same idle, vain bullshit. And, and it had me thinking, like, you know, part of the reason the Lord is just going to re refresh the earth and restart a new age is because society today is filled with too many unproductive people. Um, and part of that has to do with, you know, the way these jobs are set up, the way the economy and is set up, and the way, you know, a lot of these, you know... Um, major countries are set up. I use America, for example, since I'm in America. You know, people don't really have a lot of time for themselves and the things that they desire or want to do. And then when they do get the free time, they're so worn down from the jobs that they work um, that they're really just resting, watching, you know, a show or a movie or go out to eat, you know. And then they go back and do the same monotonous bullshit throughout the work week. But what you notice is and what I mean by unproductive is the natural roles of a man and a woman, all right? You'll see that the women are are very unproductive, and when it comes to being a woman, and the men are very unproductive when it comes to being a man, all right? <clears throat> men men should spend men should spend the majority of their time when they have free time, working on their mental health, working on their physical health, working on their spiritual health, increasing in knowledge and wisdom. That's a, a man. The first thing a man should want to inquire is wisdom. All right. You can't build anything. You can't conquer anything. You can't establish anything without wisdom. And that's another thing that's wrong with this generation, especially, you know, the the, the, young, the younger generation, which, you know, you can't fault them completely because the older generation don't give a fuck about wisdom either. We, wisdom either. All right. The scriptures speak about how you can't put wine, new wine into old bottles. All right. You'll tell an old, older person wisdom. They don't want to hear it, especially if you're younger than them. They're not trying to hear it. 
if it don't align with what they already believe or what they already um, think to be true, they don't want to hear it, especially not from somebody that's younger than them. And then the youth, they don't want to hear it if, if it don't sound cool, if it don't put money in their pocket immediately, all right? If it doesn't uh, come off as as what they see on TV or hearing the music, they're not trying to hear the wisdom, all right? And that's why a lot of people uh, look at the wisdom of the scriptures as foolishness, right? Right, that's why the scriptures um, uh, that's what the scriptures say in, of over here in the book of First Corinthians chapter one verse eighteen. It says, "For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is it is the power of Yahweh." So when we're prophesying and we're breaking down these scriptures and we're trying to impart wisdom and instruction from the scriptures on these people, they see it as foolishness, right? And even you know the Lord. Even the Lord says, um, you know, it pleases him by the foolishness of our, you know, our prophecy, our testimony, because it seems foolishness to it seems foolish to the world, but to the most high, it's profitable, it's not vain, it's productive. Because you you the the whole duty of man is what? Let me get that. Right? The act of us prophesying and putting up these videos, um, it seems foolishness to the naked natural man, right? Um, uh, matter of fact, let me go, let me get that before I get this other one. Um, over here in first Corinthians chapter two, verse 14, it says, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of Yahweh, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So, you know, the regular individual is going to think, oh, you know, this, this, this wisdom that y'all, this scripture stuff that y'all be spewing out. And we, we hear it. You know, all the time when I was in Bowers, man, y'all talking about that bullshit. Ain't shit happen yet, ain't shit gonna happen. Right? You bums, y'all need to get jobs and all you know, they be scoffing. But um, you know, to the to to the uh carnal man is foolishness, but to the Lord it's profitable because what? Let's let's read this in Ecclesiastes chapter twelve. This is Ecclesiastes chapter twelve, verse thirteen, it reads, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh. Hashem Yahweh and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man so the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments of Yahweh Hashem whether you're rich or poor whether you're famous or unknown all right no matter what state you're in or what climate you're in right or environment you're in your whole duty as a man is to fear your creator all right and keep his commandments and we teach people to keep the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh and to learn the ways of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh to the best of their ability. All right? We lead you unto life. Right? So it's profitable. It's productive. All right? If that's the whole duty of man and we're teaching you about what the whole duty of man is, it's going to lead you to live a life, a righteous life that your creator wants from you. And that in turn is productivity because we're producing fruit. All right? Another um, another word for for uh, the definition of vain is fruitless, not having fruit. Where well, we're producing fruit, right? Because we're planting this knowledge, we're planting this seed within your within your mind, and then you in turn sprout up into a man that the Lord wants you to be, and you start living a life that the Lord wants you to live. So we're productive in the work in the ministry that the Lord has set before us in His high calling as being prophets, and then in turn. You become productive because you're living a life that your creator wants you to live. But the majority of the people in this world today are very unproductive and they live a life full of vain. That's why I started this off with Edris. Let the multitude perish which was born in vain. You live a life of unproductivity, man. Okay, for an example, let me um, let me deal with the women for a hot second, right? Because nowadays you'll ask a woman a simple thing, which you shouldn't even have to ask a woman is this is just this should just be a part of her nature. Can she cook? And I don't mean just, you know, boil some water and, you know, boil broccoli. No. Can you cook? Can you throw down? Which that should just be a given because that should be what you have been taught. That's that's bare. That's bare necessities. Niggas got to eat. Right. You got to eat to survive. They, but they'll they'll act like even if the women do cook, they'll act like they deserve you know a trophy for that shit. But that shows you how how um you know how um the standard of women has fallen very very dramatically. But 
when you go to Proverbs, the 31st chapter, what is, let's see if these women are productive according to what the Lord describes a woman to be. Verse 10, this is Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. It says, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies, right? And when you go into the word virtuous, you know, some of the words that coincide with virtuous is um, having qualities, bidding fit, bid, befitting a knight, right? So, hey, you want a knight in shining armor, <laughs> you need to have those qualities. Uh, it says uh, righteous, right, of good quality, um, moral strength, high character, right? Um, let me look at virtue real quick. Yeah, let me pull up the etymology of virtue real quick. Bear me one moment. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much goes into the same thing. Moral excellence, right? These women don't have high standards and high morals. <laughs> Um, the average woman does not anyways. So the scripture here in Proverbs is asking the men who can find a virtuous woman. Verse 11, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. You can't trust these women these days. They got cell phones. They got social media. They got DMs. All right. Your woman ain't got no business having, having access to be able to receive and send out messages to other men. All right, that's a that's that's a recipe for disaster in itself. All right, she can scroll up and down all on the internet looking at other men. She's around other men. She's around other men all throughout the day. Society set up for disaster. Right, so you can't completely trust a woman in, in today's time. Okay, and because she has these devices, it leads to her not being beneficial to towards you as a man, which leads her to be unproductive towards you as a woman. Right. Verse uh, 12, it says, She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. These women don't, you know, worry about no, no wool. They don't worry about no flax, okay? You know, the wool and flax goes into fabrics, all right? Flax is like a, a, a linen, the linen cloth fabric. And, of course, you know what wool is. But, you know, women can't, you know, women used to know how to sew back in a period of time. They used to know how to put garments together. I was watching a clip not too long ago, and I believe it's in like a northern part of Russia. And the mother just spends a lot of her time throughout the day making, because the temperatures are so cold where they live at, like like it's it's snow year round, and it's very it's very it's like in negative degrees. But the mother spends ma majority of her time every day just making new clothes for the family and the kids, and it's beautiful clothing too. She working with her hands. She knows how to... You ain't got to go t and, and spend, you know, all your money at these fucking high price clothing companies. You got a woman where she, all she needs is the fabrics and she can just make you the clothes, you know, the, the, the color you want. You know, she can make you a hoodie. She can make you whatever because she, she's, she's skillful. She's productive in that manner. Now, of course... You know, all of as a man, we have fallen very dramatically from the standard of a man, and so has the women. So, of course, we're not telling you women to we expect all this from you. I'm just making a point of, you know, how the pro productivity of us as men and women have fallen from what the standard is that the Creator has set forth for us to be, right? Um, let me see. Let's let's drop down to verse. Um, uh, 26, it says, she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. These women don't know shit these days, man. Women can tell you Glorilla lyrics and sexy red lyrics all day. All right. Cardi B and all, you know, all this dumb shit. She can tell you about the real housewives of this and this reality show and all this drama and gossip, which is what a wicked woman, which which is what the scriptures describe a wicked woman being into gossip and being a busybody, moving house to house, going outside all the time, and you know, going to party and all this dumb shit. All right. Verse twenty-seven it says, "She looketh way, she looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness." So she take care of the house, and she's not idle. All right. She she may have a garden. She's making herbal medicines for the family. All right, keeping that in stock. All right, she's making food breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever, all right, she's tending to the, to the clothes, the laundry, she's tending to, you know, she's tending to the kids, welfare, she's, you know, and she's tending to herself, 
She can have hobbies, you know. She got she, there's there's a lot of hobbies a woman can get into that she may like. She may you you got women that like to draw, right? You got women that like to write, all right. You got women that like to sing. You got women that like to dance. She can have her own hobbies on the side that she's but it's but but at the end of the day, she makes sure she's productive as a woman in the sight of the Lord, right? Um. So. You know, I'm going to get off of women because I don't want to, you know, go in on them on this video. But, um, and, and, you know, just to bring out a scripture on, you know, you men that be, um, you know, just unproductive and, and, and um, you know, just idle within productivity as being a man in the sight of your creator. Let's get Colossians, the third chapter. Uh, Colossians, the third chapter. And let's read verse, let's see. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so it says, uh, set your, this is verse 2. Set your affection, I'm going to bounce around a little bit. Set, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. You men have no control over your lust, your passions, and everything you desire is on earth. Whether it be a woman, whether it be a house, whether it be a car, whether it be clothes, whether it be jewelry. Will it be fame and glory? Everything you desire is carnal. Y'all not worried about what the creator thinks about y'all and what, you know, what you should be uh, giving up to the Lord, what you should be sacrificing for the Lord and, you know, doing for your creator. So as a man, you've already fucking fell, fell off because like I brought out, the whole duty of man is to serve the creator, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah, and keep his commandments, keep the most high's commandments, man, right? Let's continue in this Colossians. As I said, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Verse 5, it says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate infection, evil con concupis concupiscence, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, right? All these men do is covet something that belongs to another man. Right, you spend all your day on Instagram and all these social media looking at how oh this man has got all popular, got all the women, got the nice car, got the jewelry, got the clothes. I want to live like that, right? When you go into the word concupiscence, concupiscence, it means to desire, a craving, a longing, basically your lust, your wild passions. You got evil passions and evil lust that you want to indulge into, right? You want to take a woman and and do uh, anal sex with her, man. Which you ain't supposed to be in no, doing no form of uh, sodomy, man. Sticking your rod in anybody's, you know, anal cavity, all right? Um, yeah, so going going back, going down more, uh, here's the point I want. Verse 23, Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So whatever you do, you're supposed to be doing it in the sight of the Lord. Even if you work in these jobs, these bullshit-ass jobs for Esau that he set up over here, you still got to realize that hey, the Lord got you in that situation, in that predicament for a moment, for a time, for however long, for a reason. All right? Work, work not as a nigga will work, but work as a man of the Lord will work. All right? Joseph didn't just sit and complain the whole time he was in Egypt when he was sold, uh, when he was put in the pit by his brothers and then sold off into slavery. He eventually got his ass up and worked for the Egyptians and became mighty, right? He he, he was a man. He, he did what he had to do as a man. So, you know, I, I didn't want to make this too long. It's just, look, you, you start to understand as you observe, observe and go throughout your day and look at these people, you know, you realize... Uh, you know, the Lord is justified in the judgment that he's going to bring because, you know, nobody's productive in what the Lord wants them to be productive in. You know, they'll they'll work these little, little jobs and then they go and do what they lust uh, want them to do. All right. And they totally forget about the creator and what he wants. All right? Even these hypocritical Christians. Lord ain't say nothing about loving everybody and worshiping Jesus and praying. To Jesus. That is completely all from the scriptures, man. All right. Here it is, you eating pork, you accepting homosexuals, you know, around you. You know, all everything that the Lord for, forbids you to do, you're doing it in the name of Jebus and Christianity. So the Lord, the Lord ain't with, with you unproductive people during this time. So, you know, that's why the judgment is going to come. 
Hey, I didn't want to make this too long. Lord willing, this was edifying. Until the next time I say, Shalom.